piece that I, when I, uh, I always loved all kinds of styles of music, and I played in a lot of bands when I was younger, and, and uh, just did a lot of rock and roll things, and I always liked the, uh, uh, um, having my group together, my guys, and, and or, or girls, and it's like, and having a good, uh, this is social outlet, we're making music together, as I kind of got going, a big inspiration for me was a guy named Michael Hedges, and when I kind of saw what he was doing, and he was just, by himself and, and doing things on acoustic guitar and it just appealed to me. I like I like being a, a loner and and it just seems like it's infinite. I can spend an infinite amount of time when I'm working with a band. I'm the guy that's wanting to go for these long practices, you know, and everybody's wanting to get home. But I always thought I just liked music and experimenting so much. And and so when I kind of do things by myself, I can spend all kinds of time exploring things. And uh, um, so as I moved into uh, a uh, different phase when I got turned on to Michael Hedges and stuff. Then I started playing around with acoustic guitar. And, uh, and then I ended up, this was like one of the first pieces that I put together with, with the, what I would call the Michael Hedges concept. I call this one Midnight Voices.
But what I do is that I'm going to present a few ideas, but what I'd like to do is to keep it open for conversation. So if I end up doing something, or if I end up playing around with some toys or something, and you have some kind of a question that's inside of you, and you just, that's the stuff I want. I just want you to, to bring up some things so we can kind of get a, a uh, conversation going. <coughs> so how many actual guitar players do we have in the room? Okay, then other musicians that play other... Look at that, I categorize it into two people. <laughs> guitar players, and there's other people that play. There should be a third one, and drummers. No, I said, because Eric's in the back of the room. <laughs> drummers, they always get the bad jokes. Really, yeah, it's not good. <laughs> and bass players, yeah. <laughs> overview of what I'm using too, just so you kind of know it, some of the electronic stuff, what's going on here, but I, uh, um, this is regular acoustic guitar that sounds like a lot of the guitars that are on the walls, I end up, um, since I play out, I have to have it amplified, so I end up um, using a pickup, and that's this thing here, just like a microphone, uh, I mean, just somebody that doesn't know anything about electronics, you're just trying to pick up the sound of the guitar and get it out to the speaker, so there's a lot of different ways, but I end up using this magnetic pickup, just kind of like the same thing on an electric guitar when you see a piece of metal underneath the strings. And then there's a uh, well, wood transducer that just sticks to the body of the wood so I can hear like that. Ooh, the lights are going to move with me. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> and, uh, but then that way I can... Uh, so just to give you an idea, this is with nothing. Then this is just with this, this one. More like electric guitar, but you can't really hear the body of the wood. So the other thing sounds like this, and it picks up the wood. And now it sounds a little bit more acoustic because it's kind of those strings. So I kind of blend between those two sounds, and send it through the speakers. There's a way to tune the guitar that just a common way that we always tune the guitar that are in all the books and stuff but today I thought since we're talking about experimenting with music is uh, just to kind of uh, brush up on like alternate tunings because whether you play guitar or don't alternate tunings are just it's just a nice way to feel musical right out of the box without having to uh, try to fill your head up with rules and regulations and and uh, technique it's just a way of getting back to what music is which is just that starting it's that it's that thing that you really said it's that thing when you walk into your table and all of a sudden you uh, you know you put your plate over here and your fork and your knife and your cup and you walk away for a second and you're like wait a minute and you kind of nudge it just a little bit and you're like ah <laughs> that's kind of what music is. We all have that ability in us that, that when we just we're feeling things and it's like and now if you want to grow that technique and, and, and study and learn and, and put a lot of time into it, you can become a very uh, expert at it. But the fundamental feeling of music is something that we all have that we can just nurture and um, and if you feel like going beyond that and taking lessons and nurturing that, great. If, if you don't have uh, that kind of discipline within yourself, you can still appreciate music and get and be very fulfilled by it and just move at your own pace. But I'm going to do a... Uh, I'm going to tune this guitar different. So that almost when it's in tune, it almost sounds... It's like out of the box it sounds good, you know? So it's like, can't go wrong with that. You can strum it. Can't go wrong with that. That's what so this is a dadgat tuning, and they call it dadgat for the notes that it's trying to represent. D A D G A D, and something like that. Any kind of an alternate tune. You can find all kinds of stuff out there on the web. But the whole idea is to get the guitar in some kind of a tuning that's almost a just you can't go wrong. So if all of a sudden you hit a few notes up here, you always got something to go to that always kind of harmonize with one another. So when you, when you, uh, you gotta sound like that, like I'm just hitting the thing. No technique here, just hitting, just hitting. And all of a sudden you realize that the simplest thing, I'm just gonna take my thumb and just move it on the guitar. And it's like by just moving one note around, I can create a lot of different textures without having, I'm not trying to do this or that or this. It's like I'm just starting very simple. So I could go like this.
same thing, and maybe I want to get this here and just make it with some of these. You know, it's like however I want it to, but it all comes down to uh, just simple notes, and there's a lot of music that you can be write songs with nothing more than your thumb, and finding your, you know, as you play the guitar, and this is where it comes down to my little table analogy here, where it's something inside of you turn something and you feel it's right. Same thing with music. If you stop long enough to just just listen and it's like don't worry about you see somebody doing something fancy and all you're fixated on is getting to that end result of trying to do like they do and all you hear yourself doing is making the mistakes trying to get to where they're at. And it's like if you just take a moment to uh, feel the sound and then it's almost like falling in love with the sound and it'll almost predict what the next where the next place will go with it. So, so it's but it's just by relaxing and listening. But if I were sitting there, I might get like three notes that I like. Don't take it hard. Don't get crazy. I'm gonna write a song with that stuff. It was a Sunday. The lights were low. He wore a that said microphone. He was talking, she was smiling. We were picking up guitar tips all the while. And oh yeah, not so bright. Talking about the lights, talking about the sprite. Oh yeah. Okay, but you see what I'm saying? I like getting goofy and corny, so it's like, you see where my point's going, but it's just a matter of the things that you feel like expressing. When it comes to songwriting, it's like if you don't play an instrument, automatically when you start thinking in terms of alternate tuning, you're just trying to make things easier. It's just it's more about working with the feeling than it is a technique. You don't want to get your head to you just, the thinking thing, the T word, the thinking word. You just got to be careful. And it's like now if you love progressing to that next level, that's great. And when you can focus your mind and learn that next step and progress, very very fulfilling. But if that is tripping you up and the, and it's making you not enjoy music because you're trying to think and you just like don't quite get it and I hate it and I'm gonna you know uh, it's like that's where you just gotta back up a little bit just find the things about music that of what you love about it and uh, so these alternate tunings great way to just move things around and find notes here right there that feels different see that's a whole different feel that, yeah, that sounds dirty that sounds dirty things out of you, you know, so, and now I'll say if I take that same tuning, and I'm just going to pick this note right here, one, once again, just one finger, and let's see, I'm holding the guitar around my neck, that's, see, you don't even have to do that, it could be like this, it could be like this, it doesn't matter, you got to stop thinking in terms of rules, and just think about the sound that comes out, and it's like, maybe when you hold it this way, something happens where you make a, I don't know if you want to do that, but it's like, if you did, you might find a different sound, that, you know, that, and, uh, it, it might inspire you to to some next level that you never would have got there if your head was this way and you were like trying to look in a music book and you're trying to focus, focus, focus. So we're just, it's a way of kind of letting our uh, spirit kind of like go out to recess. That has a whole different feel. So the whole idea sometimes with these alternate tunings, making things simple, getting them back to being simple so that our mind doesn't have to think about it. We can worry more about how we feel. And sometimes when you're just playing something, whether it's a piano guitar, I love to just hit one note. And I just really listen to that one note. And I feel that one note. And as it's dying off, and you just start to hear that low hum. And it's like, I might find that when I hit this side of the string, it sounds different there. It sounds different. Like I'm just becoming that note. That's not a song. That's not a pop song. Britney Spears is not going to be playing that. And that doesn't matter. That's like, it's a whole different animal. We're talking about music. So it's like it starts with the most simplest things. It's almost, it may be of, uh, on its most simple thing, if you're having, if, if, if you can't find an appreciation at this level, you might, it's like taking off somewhere without really knowing where you're going and you're just taking off of there but, but to, to start with with what it is about music that resonates inside of you and, and makes you feel good and it's just these are just simple things but this will this 
produces the next step. When you feel good with this, you're like... And all of a sudden, you're, you might, your head might be going like... Oh. I just hear it kind of... I just hear it kind of going... And it's almost like by just relaxing and hearing that... So then add another note. You might... And it's like, so, so the concept, whether you do fucking around on a piano, on a guitar, and if I played an instrument that I don't know, if I was playing that big stand-up bass over there, I'm not going to be ready for it, uh, um, with, with the, my chops aren't going to be up on that thing, but I will, but when you hit it, you find what I love about that instrument. And when I hit it, I realize all the things that it can do that this can't do, and that and I fall in love with those sounds, and I can entertain myself for hours. Now, if somebody that came in that was very proficient on the instrument, they just laugh at me for what I'm trying to do. But the thing is, I'm having a good time, I'm discovering something, and that's what music is. So it's not that, and that will lead you into directions of the things that you want to do with music and, and, and the things that you have to express. And I think the more we nurture those things, it's never a wrong answer there. It's like, that's the stuff. The wrong answer is when you're constantly trying to do things because somebody else does it like this and somebody else does it like this, and I'm going to try to do that too. It's like, we've got to get back to the basics of find what your voice is and what you're saying. Then when you kind of approach that, you're going to bring your identity to the table, and that's what the rest of us as listeners of music are going to resonate with because it came from a very pure place inside of you. Um, it's going to kind of switch over maybe to songwriting, but right now at this time when I'm kind of talking about guitar and chords and making sounds, some of the equipment up here, some of these the reverb that I use, is there anything in, on anybody's mind? Any questions about anything? How do you uh, factor in percussive elements uh, and, and, and combine it with, with your guitar playing? Yeah. Uh, what are some techniques as far as that? See, and, I, and something like that too starts as simple as the way that I'm, even, like right there, the, when I'm hitting the one note and it feels a certain way, there's where that percussive element comes in because before I even change a note, that right there feels completely different than this. Okay. It's nighttime. We're going to go running around. We're going to go knock on doors and get Halloween candy. Come on, follow me. <laughs> See, it's like, that's the, you know, but then this feel might... like George Michael, like, hey, hey, what's up? <laughs> so it's like rhythm as a way of like, I'm going to change the note, I'm changing the rhythm. So sometimes, so in a good prep, uh, workout for stuff that I always find, I don't even know why people don't do it. I can't sit still when I'm listening to music. I always got to be hitting, tapping, you're in the car, you know, hitting the dash and finding these sounds. Yeah, I know, you want to move out of the way, but you see me coming, it's like me, me and Oliver. And it's like, but what that does, even though I'm just having fun with music at the time, it's strengthening my sense of rhythms. And then all of a sudden, that just comes right back to this. So it's like as soon as, you, whether you want to play a chord. See, as you find, like when I'm playing that guitar, muting is, is important, like it's the strings. I mean, there's the strings, but by hitting, you know, muting is like where the... And it's like your vocabulary of how you use rhythms Will, will grow as you listen to things and play beats. And, uh, and then you can kind of bring it back with the things. And then, so it's all about how you hit the guitar. And uh, so I'm always playing around. Like if I do something like this, I could, uh, and if you'll notice, my hand is just, my hand's doing one thing. And it'll constantly be doing the same thing. But by the way, if you let go of this, and also like you know, kinds of beats. You know, it's like when you let loose, sound comes out. When you lock it in, it's there. So and this this hand's just going there. So it's almost this guy's determining the, the feel of the song. So beauty is always important. Kind of space in between songs. You know, sometimes you you play a chord and all you want to do is go. Yeah, but sometimes the beauty is the. You know, 
it's like, I was like playing with the pig on the string, right? Like, Once again, falling in love with the sound. Sometimes when I play that, like, you can brush over and just think, like, oh, they're just picking the strings. I kind of fall in love. I back up a little bit and fall in love because I realize that this sounds different than this. And all of a sudden, as you texturize. Sounds like a Pac-Man machine, doesn't it? But it's like, so just different sounds, stopping, silence, you know, it's like all these elements paying attention to these things will help your rhythm, but the, and the number one thing is when you're, when you're listening to music, always be thinking of, if I heard a beat going on the radio and it was all like, uh, you can pretty much bet I'm not playing one of those beats, I'm not going to be going, I'm always going to be chewing something off. So it's like I'm always playing around with uh, around the beats, you know, in the same way when it comes to singing, when I'm singing along with something, I don't even really sing the, the, the main melody. I'm always working on harmony. I'm always just playing around trying to fit a harmony in there because all I'm doing is just trying to train my ear and, and get better at it. It sounds terrible in the car. But as time goes on, it's in tune, you get a bit better. Then also when it comes back to just playing your own things, all of a sudden you're like, wow, how did I, how did I get better at this? And because you're nurturing yourself all the time. So um, there's that. Uh, and just while I'm here on the equipment, just to give you kind of an idea of some of the things right here, that little thing I used was, was a recording device. Great toy. Great toy to use when you want to entertain people. Great toy when you're sitting around at home and you want uh, somebody to uh, play music to. But it's just a way of recording on the spot. So I said, I said how it goes. I'm like, one, two, three, four. I do. It just comes back now if I want to go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I think it's a This is an extended model. You have to buy this whole thing. We can play all kinds of notes and solo over that baby, you know, all through the night. And we can. Uh, say whatever's on our mind, rattle it off, rattle it off, but that doesn't necessarily make it a song, it just makes it an expression, but it's not a song, so, um, sometimes when you think about songs, just, uh, it can be a very simple thing, if you start thinking in, in terms of writing ideas down in very simple ways, then you can just expand upon it, and the more comfortable you feel in branching out, but keep things simple, and what I, so like maybe a good exercise would be, if I were to say the color, what's a good color? And I say, now what does purple remind you of? Somebody would say, purple reminds me of... What? What? Flowers? Oh. Just name some other flowers. Name some flowers with purple. Purple. Violet. And are lilies purple? No, I think about flowers. And then keep thinking, pur t tell me purple. What does purple come to mind when I say purple? What do you think of? Huh? Sad? Why well, you get sad with purple? I don't know. I think of Prince. <laughs> I don't think it's a Prince. <clears throat> Give me something else that purple reminds you of. Mountains. <laughs> purple guitar. What is purple? I guess there's not a whole lot of... You picked a toughie. So it's like, so you got guitars, flowers, prints, mountains. So then all of a sudden, if we were to think about the structure of a song, since purple is our focal point, that's where we're all beginning, and then we're just branching out ideas, but if we tie a ball back into our purple, everything starts to make more sense. So then all of a sudden, if I said, uh, let's call the song the power of purple, because I love the peas, because I love popping this, like, from So if I said the power of purple, power of purple, and that's all of a sudden we're going to do a song like, power of purple. So 
now if I were to spin my verses, you know. I wanted to say I was sorry. I didn't know how. I'm just a mortal man. I don't know what you know what I found. If I found some flowers, they make the words not seem so hurtful. So I called up my florist. I said, give me some lilies. Here, what they were the color purple. You know they are the Baby back over, yeah, with the flowers I gave her. Uh, I even said one of the lilies uh, was a name, I give a name, name, name her. Uh, oh, baby. She said, you want to take a trip? I said, oh, baby. You know, I said, what do you want to see? I said, how about the purple mountain majesty? And she said, oh, planning our trip, you know, just sitting around the living room. I uh, flipped on the television. I saw this movie from 1982. You know, uh, we were singing about the rain with the color you know we love. Oh, you know, with the uh, dubs that cry. I'm talking about the friends. Oh, Lord, Bobby, come on. I want purple. Get you every time. I want purple. Get you every time. Talking about <laughs> that thing? You know, how having a very, very simple point brings everything around. It kind of anchors all those ideas. And you can take your ideas wherever you want to, but as long as they kind of have an anchor to this middle point, this is what brings things together to feel like a song. And, it, and, and they don't, sometimes if people write songs, you keep that. You hear something like a Paul Simon song, and if you were to read this words, you're like, "Oh my God, do I need to write all of that?" And it's so good. And it's like, and some of the, the wonderful things are very, very simple things of just keeping things simple, fewer words, bigger ideas. And it's like, where songs should be more like how paintings are, where a, a good painting will just project all kinds of feelings and thoughts. And it's just from one thing, but words are kind of that way. It's almost like one sentence and one sentence equals 50 in, in your mind and in your feeling. It's just a way of putting words together so that they feel colorful and that they that they kind of get the point across without having so you can even make yourself a little test i'm only going to give myself 12 words to get my point across limit it down because you would be surprised what you would find within yourself if you knew that you had to only use 12 words to explain how you feel so uh songwriting and uh um, you know sometimes when you're trying to find a uh um if you're working with writing words, whether it's poetry or, or uh, and you keep finding yourself in a box and you kind of stick around one idea and while you're doing it, saying the same idea over and over and over again, just different words, same idea. This is something that kind of makes you feel like you're more in a pond than you are a river that's uh, going. So it's like rhymes I always thought were interesting because they kind of make you, they kind of get your head out of the box. There's nothing wrong with, with developing a line just because you need to make a rhyme. Sometimes it will take you into a whole new area that you never heard of. Like if I would have said the word crazy, what, what, what? Say it again. Daisy, see? Now all of a sudden, if I said crazy, and then all of a sudden you're thinking like, well, how am I gonna bring Daisy into that? And it's like, there's the power of the rhyme. It's already feeling your head. You're already thinking about it. You're like, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, uh, but I get too much. Uh, that woman back home, she makes me crazy. Just gotta get out of here. Gotta run through a field of daisies. I'm uh, flowing, moving in slow motion. What runs with motion? Lotion. <laughs> Where are we going now? Let me play the music. Okay. Move around in motion, yeah. I know the thoughts of my baby, they start to ease my head with the cool it's like I find ways of bringing those rhymes around and they get you thinking in a whole different direction so don't underestimate the power of the rhyme for no other reason than, than the finding the word to uh, rhyme uh, when it comes to that songs, words, chord structures 
ideas? Does any questions come to mind? Anything that, you know, no matter where you might be at or things that you've done or, or things that you might feel block you or... or uh... Have you focused on any of the science of music? Working with chromatics, uh, working with uh, minor scales, major scales, in notes, out notes, any of those ideas? What do you mean? Say it again. Um, <coughs> going, going back to solid music theory and, and working with ideas like taking chromatics from chord bases and, and building arpeggios based on those chromatics, finding the in notes, the notes that are inside the scale, mm -hmm. and then and then going in some nuance by putting the out notes in strategically and off beats. Uh -huh. And, you know, really very technical ideas. Or do you just play from your feeling? Okay, yeah, if you're asking, because I think everybody's going to be different on how they approach it. Because right there when you were thinking, I was like, ooh, that sounds pretty cool. But it's almost like it's, almost <laughs> like it's a, as if it's a... Uh, um, Except it's already put together in your head. This is what I do sometimes before something. I, I think in my head, like, how can I arrange the elements? What musicians can I invite tonight that will change the elements? And then there's like an idea of, of music creation through your mind, putting things together and see what happens. And then and then, uh, then the other people would probably, I, if I were playing around, I might keep that in consideration because I know that, that uh, like when I was playing earlier with the minor thing, I know that my safe zone is going to be like my head is telling me, you know. But then, the, but then the double evil of that is that my head is telling me that that's the safe zone, and you almost don't want to stick in that. And guess what's going to happen? Your songs are going to start to sound like your other songs, like everybody else's songs and stuff. And it's like, so sometimes there's a, what, sometimes a good trigger for me is one little, uh, one little, uh, I'll, and I'll try to trick myself up on purpose to just play something out of it, some bad note.
<laughs> you brought up purple.
who I am. I'm here to find my place in your world. When I call you Rainbow Girl. started playing music and I thought yeah sometimes people ask that a lot it's like hmm 
how much time could I save in my life if I were to just write a song about it and then I could just sing my song all the time. So then that kind of got me going on this song. I was going to use it as an introduction sometime because when I started playing music, believe it or not, I'm really quiet, really shy, and I thought, what am I going to, what do I have to talk about with people? And then I thought, well, I can tell them about my mama, you know, and how she was always playing the three chords, the three magic guitar chords when I was younger in G, C, and D. You know, and even though I wanted to be a drummer, she would always be playing those chords and it, uh, I was too busy going, she's all right. Johnny Cash all the time. You know, like that kind of beat. Like everything sounds happy in that kind of beat, you know, and she can work it, she can work her magic on anything. You know, if I said, Mama, can you play some deep purple? She'd think about it with her three chords and be like, oh, Smoke on the water, fire in the sky. I'm saying, oh, she'd think about her lips up, I'm on no problem, lips up, and sun. There's a lady who sure only glitters is gold. She's by in a stairway to an Ozzy Osbourne. Going off the rails on the crazy train, we're going off the rails on the crazy train. You see what I'm saying? Magic three chords, you can make those work. So all of a sudden I realized that over oh, I got it took me a while before I realized there was more than just three chords. There's this one, this one, and I saw this one on the cover of Guitar Player magazine one time. <laughs> <laughs> like, all of a sudden I realized the more and more I was playing, the less and less she was playing. I don't know what that was all about, but I wrote a song about it. Called the Mama Song. I got the G, the C, and the D, and the bouncy little B. And an occasional when we're in a music store, it's unbelievable the acoustics in here when everybody says, Yeah! <laughs> yeah! yeah! <laughs> oh, you know, I remember when I was just about 10, Mama playing that guitar, having such a ball, strumming real proud, singing out loud like our kitchen was a concert hall. My eyes were wide, my face had a smile on the edge of my seat. I sat, saying, Mama, Mama, please, I'd do anything if you could just show me how to play like that. Because Mama was always quick to show me a tune. She could show to play any song I'd name with the only three chords she knew. When I go back home, I see that case in the same old place every time. Mama don't play much anymore, and I don't know why. This is where that yeehaw goes. Yeehaw! Nice man. So I learned that G, C, and D, because that's all you really need to play an in-country song, right? And I was bound to pick that Johnny Cash deck if it took me all my life. Mama said, son, let me show you how it sounds like the guitar out of my reach. With a grin on her face, it's up to say, you know, Johnny Cash ain't got nothing on me, now check me out, boy. Oh, there she goes again, that Johnny Cash. Cause Mama's always quick to show me the tune. She can show play the song I name it the only three chords she knew. When I go back home, I see that cash in the same old little every time. Mama don't blame it anymore, I don't know why. Guess what? Yeehaw! 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 Next thing I knew, I wasn't playing everything I'd hear. Mama didn't mind because it made good time those I had this in years. So I locked myself away in my bedroom to play, and I was a playing, and I was a playing, and I was playing, and I was uh, still playing, and I was still playing, and I was still playing, I was still playing. Until one day I just had to say, come check me out. I played something like a, something like a, something like a, no, something like a, Two, three, four. She declined, just rolled her. I said, I don't think I'm gonna play no more. Cause mama was always quick to strum me a tune. And she could try to play a song I'd name with the only three chords she knew. When I go back home, I see that case in the symbol. Blairs every time. Mama don't play much anymore. I don't know why. Mama don't play much anymore. Let me try something. Let's see what that love adding for cussing with the acoustic guitar. Oh, you're all comfortable back there. I saw you doing your last one. What do you got against the books, Bunny? It's nice to. 
depression disease. Uh, he says not to think about playing in keys. He's just thinking about time, time, moving around time. I'll play a little groove and you just see what you feel like, okay? So if I go like this.
and what goes together to make that one thing and makes you appreciate music makes you listen different when you hear things. So I thought I'd bring the recording studio here instead of inviting y'all back to the studio. So we start out with something like this. Alright, something a little funky like that. start recording stuff, track at a time. Don't you want my love? 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 Don't you
Supermarket, and you get a Starbucks coffee, and you're like, Ah, oh, this coffee's so good. I'm just gonna set it on top of the car here for a second while I load some stuff in. <laughs> and then you load it in, and then you take out the drop, and you're like, Where's Starbucks coffee? You know, that was my drama. So it's like we came up missing, and uh, a friend went searching for it, trying to find a missing drum at the side of the road. Didn't find it, but he did find this cake drum, and he painted it up. Like my other drum, he did this today. So now I'm gonna try to use this. I'm gonna, I don't know if it's gonna work, but I'm just gonna see if it, uh, if I can make this work. Now hold on a second.
and do one more song. I appreciate everybody making it out here tonight and, and all the folks that came out early for the uh, workshop and uh, uh, more music for putting out, letting us try some different things and experiment. I'd like to do something like this more often where we all get together and we talk about music and we spill BBs all over the place and we, uh, <laughs> uh, we play music and, uh, and uh, hopefully they'll have a lot of different functions that go in and hear a music store where they got all kinds of stuff. They can teach you things and they got time to uh, express things and let, let you put some of those skills to use. Let's see, what can I leave you with? going down to New Orleans to visit and I get all excited. I was like going to new places. It doesn't have to be any place fancy, it just has to be different. I like different experiences. They get me all Ooh. that's hyper. That's a guitar talk for hyper. So I thought instead of staying up all night because my flight was gonna be going out in the morning instead of just staring at the ceiling all night I thought with all that energy, you know, maybe if I put my baby right there, then maybe something productive would come out of that. Just came out. Traveler's high. Thank you. 